Okay, here we go, another one. Also chapter seven. Also with uh, strings, in this case, two strings. So the picture's kind of tiny, so let me do a bigger one. I'm not gonna bother to draw a sled. The shape doesn't matter. So we have one object here. The mass is 100 kilograms. And we have a rope attached to it. Then that rope, which they're calling uh, rope number one, uh, is attached to also the 80 kilogram sled, 80 kilogram, and that sled is pulled by another rope that they're calling number two. This whole thing happens on a slippery surface that has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.1. All right. Information given in the problem is that the tension in rope number one is 150 newtons. And what they're asking us to calculate is what is the tension in rope number two. So the dogs are pulling on the first sled. That's what's responsible for putting a tension that we're calling T2 here. And then that sled is connected by rope to the back, uh, sled on the back. So the sled on the back is going to ha be having a tension, T1, pulling on it to make it accelerate. Now, the in, for any string, whenever the, a string is under tension, the string is going to apply, apply equal forces at both ends to the objects that are connected to both ends of the string. So if we are calling, this is a little big if we're calling this t1 this tension t1 and, and the problem says is 150 this force also here pulling to the left on the 80 kilogram sled is also 180 and on the right of the 80 kilogram sled we have the tension t2 which is what we're looking for all right so what are the forces acting as that's always the recipe look at the forces acting on the objects of interest. So I'm going to look at the forces acting on both sleds. So start with the 100 kilogram one. So that one has a normal force, F sub n. I'm going to call that F sub n1. Of course, it has its own weight. So that's Fg1, I'm going to call it. There is kinetic friction because they gave us a coefficient. So F sub k is a force going to the left because the sleds are moving to the right. And the other force is T1 right here, the tension in the first rope. So that is the free body diagram for the 100 kilogram uh, sled. The free body diagram for the 80 kilogram sled looks like this. That's gonna be F sub N2. We're gonna have a weight for that sled, Fg two we have the tension t2 and we're gonna have the tension t1 the string is pulling to the left on or 80 kilogram sled and the string number one is pulling to the right on the 100 kilogram sled so those are the forces so let's use those free body diagrams to do the to write Newton's second law. So for the first sled, the hundred kilogram sled, I'm gonna look at that one first and look at the forces in the x direction and then look at the forces in the y direction. So in the x direction, what do we have? We have T1 positive. We have kinetic friction negative because it's going to the left. That's all we have in the x direction equals the mass of that sled multiply by its acceleration. So what do we know in this equation? The tension is 150 newtons. We also know that Fk is mu k times the normal force. So we can write that as mu k times the normal force and that would be equal to the mass of that sled times its acceleration. So what kind of things 
do we know here? Which, which variables we don't know? At this point, we don't know the acceleration. We also don't know the, uh, we do know the coefficient of kinetic friction. We don't know the normal force, but you should, uh, based on your experience solving problems and watching videos, you should know that in these horizontal surface situations, the normal ends up being equal to the weight only because the surface is horizontal. If it wasn't horizontal, we'll have a cosine of the angle that the surface makes with the horizontal. In this case, which is, this is just mg. So I can replace here this equation, you can put the fn right there, and we could do 150 newtons minus coefficient 0 0.1 multiplied by fn, but that's the same as the weight of the sled number one, so that's 100 kilograms times 9.8 to give us the weight, the weight of that sled, and equals the mass of the sled, 100, multiplied by its acceleration. So we have a bunch of numerical, well, one, okay, let's try this. So 150 newtons, I'm continuing to write this equation minus 0 0.1 times 100 is 10. 10 times 9.8 is 98. All that is going to give me units of newtons. And that's going to be equal to 100 kilograms times A. So notice that we have an equation where only A, there's only one variable, and that is A. That's the only one that's unknown. So. 150 minus 98 is going to give us 52 newtons. So 52 divided by 100 kilograms should be the acceleration of block number one. So that is simple. That is zero. Well, let me write it this way. A equals 0 0.54, 0 0.52, and that will be meters per second square. So we got result here for the acceleration you might be thinking well that's not what they were asking us to find but as i've said in previous uh, videos when you're solving a problem you don't necessarily know how you're going to get to the final answer so what you do is you follow the procedure the procedure is sketch of the problem newton's second um, free body diagram then newton's second law and you write your newton's second law and you see that there's some things that you can calculate and see things that you cannot. And again, as I said before, you don't know exactly how to get to the final answer, but you find your way as you start writing equations and calculating things. So at this point, I know that the acceleration of the sleds is going to be 0 0.52 meters per second squared. So how do I relate that to the ultimate question, which was what's the tension on the string that is pulling on the 80 kilogram sled? What is the tension in that string? So one thing that I know about a system with a string connecting two parts of the system is that the string provides what we call a constraint. So the constraint equation for this system is that the acceleration of sled number one is going to have to be equal to the acceleration of sled number two. So now we know what's the acceleration of the 80 kilogram sled. So let's take a look at the Newton's second law in the x direction for this sled and, um, and solve for something. I just noticed that I'm missing a force. That can happen, so you always have to be checking and double checking your work. When I did the free body diagram for the 80 kilogram block, I left out one of the forces acting on the 80 kilogram block. Can you spot which one I left out? So what I left out is friction because this sled is also rubbing against the ground just like the 100 kilogram sled is rubbing against the ground and has a force of friction. So uh, that one I could call FK1 and so in addition to the tension number one pulling to the left we're going to have kinetic friction acting on the 80 kilogram sled. All right, so that's the, those are the one, two, three, four, five forces acting on the 80 kilogram sled. 
So we're looking for the tension number two. Let's do the uh, Newton's second law for that slip for that uh, yeah for the eighty kilograms slip. Let's do that. Okay, so some of the forces in the x direction. Let me specify here very clearly that we're doing the eighty kilogram sled. So for that sled we have some of the forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. What are the forces in the x direction? T2 is going to the right. We got T1 pulling to the left. We have the force of kinetic friction and also pulling to the left. And that's all we have horizontally. So equals the mass. I'm going to just put the 80 kilogram now and multiply by the acceleration and we know what the acceleration is going to be 0 0.52 so i think it's time to delete or erase things down here let's write the acceleration over here so this is going to be 80 kilograms times 0 0.52 Okay, I'm gonna erase here. And let's see, so that equation says T2 minus T1. Well, I know that T1 is 150, so I might as well just use it now. So I'm doing this equation, guys, right here. T2 minus one, uh, T1, which is 150 Newtons, minus FK2, so that is mu K2, times the normal, again, based on your experience, you already know that in a flat surface, this, the normal is gonna be equal to the weight of the object, so M2 times G. So I just wrote this FK2 force, and they're equal, the sum of those forces in the X direction, the T2 is positive and the other two are negative, should be equal to the mass, which is 80 kilograms, Multiply by the acceleration, which we say was the same as the number we calculated before, 0 0.52. So the right hand side is going to be 80 times 0.52, so that is 8 times 5.2, that's 41.6. 41.6, that's going to be Newtons. So what is T2 then? We're almost done to with this. So T2 is going to be equal to, I'm going to move everything with the positive, uh, the stuff on the left-hand side we're going to, that is negative is going to go to the right-hand side with a positive number. So what's that's 150 plus mu k is 0 0.1, and the mass of the sled is 80 kilograms times 9.8, and we need to add to that the 41.6, that was the result of 80 times 0.52. So there we have it, just numbers to put in your calculator. So, what numbers did we get here? Um, so, 0.1 times 80 times 9.8. I'm going to add to that 41.6 and we're adding to that 150 so 270 even 270 newtons is our final answer for T2 this is equal to T2 oops T2 well oh boy T2. Alright, that's another problem for you.